Okay, so now we're going to look at the cerebellum. And the cerebellum is, as I told you uh, before, joined to the brainstem through uh, the peduncles. And there are three peduncles, the, the inferior, the middle, and the superior. We will learn that um, in a little more detail later. Uh, this is the superior cerebellar peduncle coming out, going forward. Um, what you can see is this is a sagittal section. This is the, the back. This is the front. So spinal cord is down here. This is medulla. Here is pons. And midbrain would be right here. Here is the cerebellum. And what you can see is that it's joined by this white matter tract to the brainstem, to the pons, only to the pons. So let's look, look at a couple other things. You see that this is a, uh, the, the, the core of the cerebellum is white matter. And then surrounding the, at the edge of it, on the rind of it, is a gray matter structure. And that is called the cerebellar cortex. So there are two cortices in the human brain. One is the uh, cerebral cortex that we've touched on before, and the other one is the cerebellar cortex. If people just talk about cortex, they mean cerebral cortex. This is the forgotten cortex, but it is an important cortex. And this is where a lot of motor learning uh, takes place. So if you go out and you try to play a new instrument, play a new sport, ride a bike, you haven't done that, juggle, when you haven't done that, et cetera, this is, you'll be using your cerebellum. OK. Now, there uh, are three parts to the, to the uh, cerebellum. And if we zoom in here, this is a coronal section through the pons and cerebellum. So this is through the hindbrain. And what you see is the, the base of the pons. The, we're now looking at a cross section of that bulbous basis pontus. Here's the base of the pons. Here is white matter. This is a peduncle. This is the biggest peduncle, the middle cerebellar peduncle. And then here is, uh, here's the cerebellum. And what you see is that there are two hemispheres. And then there's this central region, which is called the vermis. And there are, in fact, three regions. The vermis, the near part of the hemisphere, which is called the paravermis, next to the vermis. And then these lateral part, the lateral part to the hemisphere, the lateral lobes or lateral hemispheres. So in general, the vermis is going to be in charge of midline uh, uh, movements such as gait, speech, balance, uh, gait, speech, balance, um, walking. Uh, and the, whereas the paravermis is much more involved in reaching and grasping hand-eye coordination with, with the, uh, with the uh, limbs. Now, what, one of the important things to understand is if there is a lesion in the cerebellum or in the peduncle, as we'll see, where is that going to affect? Is that going to affect movement on the same side or the opposite side? And the answer is same side. And I just want to uh, illustrate that by uh, showing you uh, the, the basic pathway, which we will go over again, uh, that tells you that this is um, coming, uh, this is going to affect the same side. So information from the motor cortex that is going down to the corticospinal tract or the corticobulbar tract sends a copy of what it wants to do into the cerebellum. The cerebellum processes that information and sends its instructions on how to do it smoothly back to the motor cortex via the thalamus. So this thalamus is dealing with the contralateral motor cortex, and so it's dealing with ipsilateral movement. And you can go through these, these uh, diagrams to, to convince yourself of that uh, if that was a little rushed, but the bottom line is that damage to the cerebellum or to the peduncles is going to affect ipsilateral movement. Now, what type of effect is it going to have on ipsilateral movement? It's going to produce something called ataxia. And ataxia is a is, is, it's not that you can't move. It's not paralysis as what, as what you would get with, say, corticospinal tract or corticobulbar tract lesions. 
Instead, what it is, is it's a loss of coordination. So for example, if I am trying to reach my finger, if I'm trying to point to my finger, I have to go, I have to go and then slow down so that I end on my finger. If I fail to slow down, I could overreach, or if I slow down too much, I could underreach, and that is exactly what happens in these cerebellar lesions that produce a symptom called ataxia. So ataxia is marked by, as you approach the target, there is an overshoot, undershoot. It's a dysmetria. You are under, uh, you're um, not correctly estimating where the end target is and how to get to that end target. And so this gives a very uh, jerky, uh, uncoordinated uh, appearance to movements that are ataxic. Um, and how do you get ataxia? You get ataxia through lesions to the cerebellum. Now here is a cross section through the cerebellum. This is the human cerebellum. Here is the medulla. Here is the cerebellum. And what you see here is that the, the cerebellum comes over the medulla, although it is not attached. Important to remember, the only place where it's attached is at the pons through the peduncles. So here's the medulla, here's the cerebellum. Here's the vermis and the hemispheres. And a lesion here will affect ipsilateral movement, movement on the same side. Here is a section through the pons. Here's the basis pontus. Here's the peduncle. Here is the, is the cerebellum, hemisphere, vermis, other hemisphere. So you can see that if I cut, if there's a lesion in this cerebellum or there is a lesion in the peduncle, same deal. They're both going to affect ipsilateral movement. And finally, one thing that you can notice here very nicely are these gray matter, uh, coll collections of gray matter deep in the cerebellum. So this is all cerebellum. And these are called deep cerebellar nuclei. And they give rise to the output of the cerebellum. Information comes in. Information goes out from the, uh, the deep cerebellar nuclei. And finally, as we go forward, we're going to enter into the midbrain. So here's the, here's the pontine nuclei, uh, the basis pontus. And now, once again, the, the cerebellum is overhanging this, but n is not connected at this point. We are now set up to take the plunge. We're going to go into cross sections, and we're going to start with the medulla, which is the toughest. So be strong. Mm -hmm.